welcome back to Dallas Darts Organization International. Back in September, I had a chance to travel up to Montreal and spend a few days training and uh, talking with Master Hai Yang, founder of Dallas Darts Organization International. We had some great weather, unseasonably warm weather for uh, Quebec for that time of year. And uh, in between, you know, training sessions, training in Xing Yi, uh, we talked about Xing Yi, mostly Xing Yi, because that's my primary art. And even though Master Yang uh, practices several different arts, I feel like that may be his favorite too. Uh, and so one of the great things about being able to train with somebody like Hai Yang is that no matter how much that you learn from them, there's always something more to learn. And um, that was definitely the case on this trip. I hope that you enjoy. Welcome back to the Dowie Talks Expert Series. I'm here again in Quebec, Montreal with Master Hai Yang for a second time. How are you doing, Master Yang? Very good, thank you. Uh, thank you for making the time to have the interview again. I hope you enjoyed the, the trip so far. Yeah, thanks for having me, I appreciate it. So I wanted to ask you some questions about um, the, the history of the different branches of Xing Yi. In Xing Yi, we've got the, the Shanxi, the Hunan, and the Hebei style. The Hebei style seems to be the most popular today. What, why do you think that is? You mentioned two questions, actually. First question is, uh, you, you, you stated that the Xing Yi, there are three styles, Henan, Shanxi, Hebei. Then you asked me why it seems that uh, Hebei style is more popular. For the first, uh, not quite the first statement, I my opinion is for many years, I start to, to say this, that to Xing Yi, there's only two styles, Shanxi and Hebei. Why there's no Henan? Henan is not the Xing Yi, that's the Xin Yi. So Xin Yi Liu He, the different style. Xing Yi was developed based on Xin Yi, but then when the practice changed from Xin Yi to Xing Yi, which is X I N G, it's not the same style anymore. So we should we should say we should put Xin Yi as another uh, separate style to be fair to Xin Yi. Otherwise, if we put the Xin Yi as a part of Xin Yi, it seems I feel a little bit unfair. Okay, so this is my first uh, uh, opinion. But other people may have a different opinion. They have different way to classify, to categorize different styles. That's people's freedom and the choice. For the second topic, uh, you say why Hebei style is more popular than Shanxi style. Uh, maybe your personal background is the Hebei style, or maybe I teach the Hebei style, but my feeling is, is Shanxi style seems more popular in than Hebei style. Why? Because uh, they have a lot of, uh, you know, teachers, and especially now, they, they promote the their style as more than Hebei uh, teachers. Uh, this is based on my personal experience. But some, yes, can, you can say that sometimes the Hebei style seems uh, is taking more space, right? Mm. There's a lot of teachers and uh, like a, so the fam famous name like uh, in the history, like Gu Yunshen, Sun Lu Tang, Shan Yunxiang, Li Chunyi, Zhang Zhaodong, Xue Dian, all those big names from the Hebei school. But in Shanxi, there's a good name also, such as uh, Song family mm. or Che family. There's yeah. mainly the two family, other families, I'm not very familiar, but at least there are two families there. So this is very popular also. Reason, I think there's a, uh, the, the staff popularity based on, I think, two factors. First of all, is that how people promote this. And the second is, it uh, can be a result of uh, how uh, people try. When more people practice one style, automatically the staff become more popular. And uh, the reason for more people to practice one style, I think based on their experience or even maybe perception. Um, uh, from the practice perspective, I think Hebei style is a little bit more organized in terms of uh, content. Mm. Content. They have, we have the uh, specific routine. We know which, which school have a water routine. Um, at the same time, when I talk to a lot of uh, famous Shanxi teacher, it seems not very clear of what they have. They can, they can have a new routine all of a sudden. Then they would say, no, this routine has been developed uh, a while ago, and, but they, they, they never share with the community. Then all of a sudden, the new routine come up. I think maybe they made the routine based on, you know, old idea, I think. Right. You know, like I've known you for a little while now, and you can look at someone's practice and automatically tell 
if they're Shanxi or uh, Hebei, or even if they're Hebei, what branch of Hebei that they're from. If, if you were to explain to someone that didn't know a whole lot about Xingyi what the difference between Shanxi and Hebei was as far as the flavor, like if you see some Shanxi practitioner, what is it about Shanxi Xingyi that's, that's different? Yes, that's a very good question. It's a technical question. Okay. So overall, Shanxi practice is a very compact, mm -hmm. uh, compact, right? Compact. Yeah. It's lack of uh, extending motion. At the same time, Hebei style focus more on the extending movement. They do not focus on the lot of uh, inward contracting motion. That's the first. Second, to the movement, Hebei style, they, the way they manage their back hand is a little bit extended to the backward, close to the body. Shanxi seems the body compact, compact then seems the back hand extend forward, move toward the front hand, tend to. And the Shan Hebei style, they, when they go to forward, they steadily move, retreat a little bit, naturally. But Shan Xi style seems, it seems, uh, I only overall, uh, if you practice differently, that's your choice. It seems they go forward, then back even more, more than, more than Hebei. And the Shan Xi body structure lean forward even more because already company need to go further. But Hebei style seems the body extend backward a little bit more. And then the Hebei style leaning motion about 15 degree. Shanxi can reach to 25, 30 degree if I you see the typical practice. And the Shanxi style really focus on the, the back round yeah. like this motion. Hebei style, no, you naturally keep the same structure. Uh, Shanxi style, their step smaller, they move forward. Hebei style try to make longer step. Arm move further, foot move uh, further. Shanxi style focused a lot of uh, rotation on uh, uh, the lower Dantian core area. Hebei style focused on a lot of upward, downward, and the chest and the hip rotation. Um, Shanxi style, when, when they put the hand, they very, very often they use the side way to do this. Hebei style used this area more. Uh, that's a, it's a, there's a lot of uh, differences. But overall, we see the overall imagery the imagery, the feeling, instead of have a specific criteria to judge a practice, is a feeling. Uh, to, 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 to evaluate one person's practice uh, about their level, their experience, their, their quality, without that have a different, uh, you know, uh, that be a different topic. But overall, to, to differentiate the two system, two style, and this is how I see this. Makes sense. Thanks for the tea. Yeah, very welcome. You mentioned some of the famous names in Hobei style practice, like Xu Dian. You mentioned Li Sun Yi. And I wanted to ask you a question about something that Li Sun Yi is famous for saying. He said that um, something along the lines, I'm paraphrasing, that all other martial arts were, were martial arts, but that Xing Yi was the national art. Uh, what, what do you think he meant by that? Back then, that he said that around the 19. Around the 1920 something or 10 something, or my, my long time ago, I didn't because no one know when at which moment he says that, and then become a famous uh, uh, the, the statement made by Li Sun Yi. The, back then, <clears throat> the first national martial art organization or special specialized to promote martial art with a with an organization as a format. It's not one person. It's the Zhonghua Wu Shi Hui. Oh, Chinese Martial Artist uh, Association or oh, organization um, created in Tianjin by Li Sunyi, Zhang Zhaodong, and a few famous people back then. Not only they focus on Xing Yi, they, but, but also invited other styles such as Ba Ji, you know, even some Tai Chi. Many styles were taught, but mainly Xing Yi. So the, the founder of that organization mostly are two important person. One is the Zhang Zhaodong and the Li Sunyi himself. The, of course, they have other people also. They, the main curriculum was Xing Yi, was Xing Yi. Uh, through competition, through, you know, testing, and they realized, well, Xing Yi, the idea was uh, uh, advanced back then. First of all, they, they go focus on the mind. Second, they focus on the coordination between the mind and the movement. Then third, they use a dynamic approach to develop the martial instinct instead of focus on the 
like all the way the form, the structure. No, they focus on the development the instinct. It really, it was a really new idea back then, and has been tested in different occasions. So he he claim that's the national art. So all the others are martial art. Xing Yi is the national art. Also, those martial artists tried to unify, promote, motivate、uh, Chinese people back then, who who was who were considered as the weak people, sick people,、mm. you know, physically. Right.、Uh, may not be mentally. I'm not sure. Okay, sick physically, weak people. You know, to be strong. So they use those kind of a saying or the slogan to let people to practice. I think it's based on this reason. And later on, yes, it's true that Xing Yi was or has been the was considered the most practical style in Chinese martial art community. And anyone can say that this style is a practice. My style is a practice. My style is wonderful, of course, but. If we compare the technique, Xing Yi is a really, really practical style because they promote the concept that how you practice this, then you how to use it. Back then, there's no such concept. Okay, they say you do the form, then that's it. Then you apply this. But Xing Yi, how do you do it? How to use it? The way to check, to evaluate, to judge your practice correct or not to see you have a first martial power or not. The second. You have you can use this or not, which means speed, timing, experience, angle. You know many many factors to judge someone. That was very new back then. So he he claimed this as a national art. But if we look back from the、uh, we see the modern from the current this perspective to analyze what happened before this, how I you know、uh, understand this, how I perceive this. Yeah. So. It was a it was kind of a cutting edge concept at the time to to not I, I guess we'll, we see a lot of forms where you have a long ornate form that you might have to really think about how to extract the the actual techniques from. But in Xingyi, what you see is actually how, how you practice it is how you would、yes. de deploy it、yes. in a situation. And then you mentioned also the concept being a new concept of、uh, honing the martial instinct or like the national、uh, the natural instinct fighting instinct in Xingyi. Would you say that that's the that's the core purpose of the art is to refine that instinct? In in Chinese,、uh, the system, all the we say cultivation, training, practice, those system of fighting. You use the word fighting system. The 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 time you we use the time to dis distinguish or to separate the old way of the new way of training. Should back to Ming Dynasty.、Uh, the the general is named Qi Ji Guang, the author of the famous military training manual called Ji Xiao Xin Shu in the Ming Dynasty. Back then,、uh, there's a lot of、uh, war happened around that time. But mainly speaking, is between China and Japan, and there's a lot of、uh, Japanese bandit.、Uh, those uh, people, pirate, pirates, went to Paris, went to China. You know, the the type of war. In the beginning. Ming army was so weak in in confronting the Japanese those、uh, warriors those、uh, fighters. Japanese had a great weapon. They have a great training method. Then when the Ming army confronted the, those、uh, Japanese pirates, Ming army just lost. Of course, Ming army would win in the end, but with a big sacrifice. Many people died, so made the people to think about how come there's a 100 or, or maybe only 50 or less than 100 they, those kind of warriors from Japan, Japan, Japan. They come with the boat, then they can defeat it. They could defeat so many、uh, professional military soldiers. What's happening? Well, because the way the the, the fighting strategy between the army and the pirates are different. Were different before. Why? Because they were dynamic, very fast. They attack you, they go away. But army, you no, know, they focus on the layout. They they use different method. Then Qi Ji Guang revolutionized the strategy and trained the soldier the mind that how to be brave, how to be courageous in front of the Japanese warrior.、And、then they also revolutionized the training method. They invented new military weapon. So from then on, 
the concept of using mind in training soldier become part of the formal curriculum in the military training document. Before there's no such concept. You are the soldier, give you weapon, you train, you kill. That's it. You get killed two by right? Another soldier will come. Normally soldier will peasant. Right. right. Then they give you six months, three months training, you get killed, another soldier will come. Right. right. But they find out no, if you're doing this, we never can win the real battle. So they change the method. This kind of method should be it was uh, supposed to be the the mother form of the early stage of the foundation for the later the concept of uh, internal martial art, which had been borrowed by the 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 later internal martial art the the martial artist such as the when they invented Tai Chi, the other concept the 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 movement even from the Ji Xiao Xin Ru from the the Qi Ji Guang Zhan Qi Ji Guang the book. Xing Yi, they, their concept, a lot of from the Qi Ji Guang, the military concept. So those concepts have been applied in martial art uh, training later on, even though they, even though they invented in hundreds of years later than this, but still that's the early theoretical foundation of the later internal style. So I think that is the triggering point of uh, what make uh, the mind, the focus, those kind of uh, detail-oriented training and which created or revolutionized Chinese martial art practice. That makes sense and it makes me think of something is that um, some people believe that certain types of martial arts bring out a certain personality or train a certain type of personality in the people. I, I kind of I kind of believe that myself. And in Xing Yi, because of the nature of it, because it's uh, seemingly linear and so direct, I think people that practice Xing Yi, it helps to develop their uh, tenacity and um, like you said, their their bravery. Would you would you say that the Xing Yi training has that effect on on people's uh, behavior or personality? I think so. I, I fully agree with you, with your your your, your statement. But by the way, sorry, audience, because we are shooting this video in my yard. Okay, sometimes my neighbor are working. You no, know, they are cutting some some branches, so it may we may hear some uh, noise. So please forgive us. Okay. And uh, I think so because I need, I need in Chinese concept like this, any physical movement may affect our mind or at least mental state, right? Mental state is temporary, mind is long term thing, and may affect our mind. The constantly affection uh, affect the mind uh, affected by by this kind of training may eventually affect our deeper part, which is the personality or character of ourselves. May train, but in Chinese term we use the word spirit or shen or yi. Yi means the mind. So what difference between shen and the yi? Shen is a higher level. Yi is a is a lower level. But the shen of the yi eventually will affect the shen. Shen should manage the yi. So we train the yi in order to have an impact on the shen. In order to the shen of the shen may may change our. Later on, we call personality or your part of our nature, right? We are not talk. We are not talking about the human nature. We talk about the individual's personality. Collectively, we call the human nature. Individually, we call the personality. Right. So the spirit and uh, the personality can reflect reflect our spirit and our mental state. So in 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 Taoism, in Chinese, we separate the mind and the spirit. Then next step is the behavior. In martial art, we call this the movement or practice. So those are the relationship: physical part, mental part, spiritual part. Now the question is, what is the right um, the state of our spirit? I think that's an even deeper topic. The different system use different method to train to improve our spirit. Uh, but in martial art, we focus on the mind, which is used to guide the movement. Your question is about how the movement will have an impact on our mind, on our spirit. This is about how I answer this. So I put the word spirit here, yeah. in not only the mind. So the spirit would be the long term effect. I think so. Yeah. I think so. Yeah. I think so. Even in, in Taoism, we have the two terms for that. We call the prenatal spirit and the postnatal spirit. Postnatal spirit that our active nature. People want to move, want to think, want to act, right? But the prenatal nature means the na nature of the spirit is stable, calm, tranquil, relaxed. So in meditation, we try to 
relax ourselves, mind, physical body, in order to let the the spirit wake up because it's the quiet. Then there is the 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 energy will raise up in the this kind of tranquil state, which to wake up the spirit or postnatal spirit. You started training at a, at a really young age, right? How old were you when you started doing Shingi? Six years old, six form, years old. formerly, formerly six years old. But we call six years old. That's the, you know, lunar calendar, right. solar calendar, five and a half, six, around the six. So, you know, you talk about the the Shingi, the effect that it has on on the mind, and then the mind on the personality. Do you do you think training in Shingi is appropriate for for young children? Of course, young children. Yeah. Of course, right. Uh, society are involving, constantly involved, okay, constantly involved. Uh, however, uh, the value can change, the culture can change, the uh, the perception can change, right? When people to, to see what kind of uh, what social change, but our human nature doesn't change much, doesn't change much. So, to a, to a young kids, they always to be what strong, spirit, uh, we say strong physically. Mentally, spiritually, psychologically, be able to handle uh, different challenges, stress, to be able to study, keep going, uh, to be able to um, uh, have a, st a physical, a strong body, and uh, it's uh, of course good, good idea. Yeah, I agree. You know, I, I asked some of our other guests this question too because I, I I talked about how I used to train with some Japanese guys when I was younger, and growing up in Japan, they in their school system they have mandatory they had to take martial art, right? They had to take either like kendo or, or judo or something of that nature. What do you think about that idea in the West? Do you think it would be a good idea for something like Shingi to be taught in? Uh, I in think schools? so. I think so. First of all, we can take this as the physical oriental physical education system. Right. Second with a little bit emphasized on self-defense um, uh, aspect. Then even more, you know, we can, we can, we can, we can bring some uh, more uh, subtle benefit, such as have a stronger mind, right. at least to be able to have enough energy to study. Right. Right? Uh, I, you know, there's nothing, it's no contradiction between being strong, being solid, and being nice. Right. Right? Being nice is about the personality or the right. character. And have a strong mind, have a strong personality has nothing to do again. Doesn't again. We need to have a well-developed individual. When in front of the challenges, the person is strong. Otherwise, deal with the neighborhood, deal with the family, deal with their friend, deal with their colleagues with kindness and with the you know uh, the right behavior. It's nothing wrong. Yeah. Now, like I mentioned before, uh, in my life, I experienced uh, some negative uh, life experience. Okay, but. I believe I'm a strong person because I can manage those stress, those challenges in life. So I attribute those those uh, results from to the my much other training background. I, I think so. You know, I also make make my my body strong and, uh, and uh, making making myself to be ready. You know, to study, to work, to perform. Right. And, uh, I greatly uh, appreciate uh, my training. But at the same time, why other people, younger people, cannot you know uh, receive uh, uh, receive the same benefit? I think that'd be a good idea. I do too, and I, I think there's a misconception in the in the West that some, for some reason, because people don't know that much about it, they equate martial arts with violence, and they think that if you teach martial arts to children, that it will cause them to become more violent. But I think the opposite is actually true, because I think it's easier to be kind and compassionate when you come from a place of being healthy, come from a place of being strong. You're more secure in yourself. You have less reason to be. I think so. I think so. Being violent has nothing to do with your practice. What I see in my life, those people who are violent are those who do not practice martial art at all. Right. Right. They do not appreciate the life. Yeah. They do not appreciate the nature. They do not appreciate relationship. Then they even do not appreciate the existence of themselves. Right. So they they perceive life differently. They they have different value. So uh, this has nothing to do with the martial arts training. Of course, when martial artists become angry, upset, or become potentially violent, they can, he can create more damage, right? That's but people very often only focus on the damage because that person practiced martial art. Right. Unfortunately, most people uh, uh, who are really violent are not the martial artists. The most martial artists I know in my life are the nicest individual, right? 
By the way, I'm very nice. I'm not a violent. I practice martial art. I think I'm a good example yeah. of this. I'm kidding, okay? Just very, kidding. Very, very peaceful. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. So earlier today, we were talking a little bit about uh, the five elements in TCM as opposed to uh, to Shingi. And there's this common conception or misconception also in the West that, you know, people when they practice the five elements in Shingi, of course, we have, you know, uh, Pichuan, you know, which is metal associated with the element of metal and metal is associated with the lung. Mm -hmm. And then we have Zwan, which is associated with the element of water, which is associated with kidneys. Some people that are new to Xing Yi think or have been told that performing these specific uh, movements within the five elements is, can be beneficial or if done improperly harmful to the organ that's associated with the element. What, what, what do you have to say about that? This is a good question. It's a great question. Um, why study Xing Yi in China? I learned the same thing. That my te that my teachers would tell me that uh, there's the five elements they construct each other they counter each other or distract each other destroy each other if you use a violent term uh, but then uh, metal is the pea and uh, the wood is the bone the water is the zuan they use the five element even one step further they would say when someone use the metal you use the you know what's the name the fire to conquer when you use the fire use the water use the water use the earth earth use the wood then never stop that is the only for teaching purposes in reality it's not true of course it's a good idea to follow this kind of uh, structure or follow this kind of relationship in training to start with to have you remember there's a five elements and the five movements there's a relationship of them however in practice there's a in self-defense, you don't need to use the metal to conquer uh, the wood. You don't need the wood to conquer uh, the, 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 the earth, okay? You don't need it. Because in the self-defense, there's much more factors, more than the movement, that including speed, power, experience, your physical strength, situation, angle, timing. There's so many factors can determine that which movement will conquer, will be used to conquer with the other one. It's nothing to do with the five elements, these relationships. So we practice, yes, we can keep that in mind for fun. In reality, you don't need. That's the first. Second, people will say, okay, metal is from the lungs, and the, the, the water is the kidney, uh, liver is this area, and the heart is here, uh, the fire. So you can, you, you can, when you practice, you can focus on this, for example, fire, you, you focus this area, and the, and the, and the punch, you, you push by the bike, you, you use the wood, you turn the hip, there's nothing wrong. You can use this to explain this, this uh, to emphasize those specific practical aspects. You can use to emphasize this, but in practice, the good practice which focus on everything, not only those areas. You see, why teach people, even when we work together, I never, never use elements to emphasize which organ. We emphasize on the, the palm, the hip, and the main part in the body in order to generate power. So physically, perfect movement, but you may neglect other important area. Think about this. In martial art, we always talk about the Dan Tian, okay? So Dan Tian is always there. But if the five elements or heart, river, liver is so important, how can you deal with the relationship with Dan Tian? So which one more important? If Dan Tian more imp important, why you talk about the heart? If Dan Tian more imp important, why talk, talk about the, we say, the, this area? It's already contradictory, right? So the, my answer is everything is important, but we should not overemphasize on those theoretical part. In in training, especially in application. Looking for a magic, a magical result by using destructive relationship among each element re representing each martial movement in self-defense situation is an illusion. Okay, will end up in a failure. Okay. That's how I see this. So I know that um especially when you were younger, you, you had a lot of good Qigong teachers also. Um, 
it, do you think that Qigong is an important thing for a Xingyi practitioner to practice? Do you think that it's a, a necessary thing for a Xingyi practitioner? It, uh, okay, it depends how we de define the practice of Qigong. So what is Qigong? We Qigong for health or Qigong for, for what? What is Qigong? Recently, I'm writing my book. There's one of the chapter about this. We call this the Yeng Gong. Yeng Gong. Yeng, gong. Yeng means heart. Gong means practice. So you see someone break the stone, break the wood, and break the, you know, like the Japanese karate. I saw demonstration. They, they cut something, and the Chinese, there's a Shaolin monk, they put the stuff, you know, yeah, and the spear. They even uh, 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 for, turn it around like the, like the, so, like the, the windmill, right? Yeah. On their stomach. And if they, they put some chopstick to put that here, when I was a child, we practiced this as well for fun. Mm. But we never called it the Qigong. We called it the Yeng Gong, hard practice. Mm. But my grandfather always stopped me when he saw I'm doing this. He said, no, no, don't do this. You, you damage yourself, it's not good. People say, oh, you can, you can manage the strength. No, how can you manage the strength if you want to practice correct, right? So that is called the Yeng Gong. It has nothing to do with qi gong, nothing to do with qi gong. But from 1980s, it's about the part of my book I'm writing. From 1980s, qi gong become a popular qi gong. But for health, for develop a certain you no know, energy ability, for uh, to 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 motivate to uh, uh, promote general health, use qi gong to cultivate yourself. Then people are very innovative back then from 1980s. So they put. Yeng Gong and the Qi Gong become a Yeng Qi Gong. It seems they can break the stone, they can punch the, the wood, or have something related to Qi Gong. You see, they subtly change the meaning, they put them together. That is the marketing thing. Those people who break the stone have nothing to do with the Qi Gong. People do Qi Gong cannot, cannot have this at all because we have to define what is the Qi Gong. Anything for health is qi gong. Anything use hard training have uh, make the body strong to destroy something called yeng gong. This is no yeng qi gong. Even though some people invented this term back to 1980s, 1990s, they just for marketing purposes. So, but unfortunately, nobody clarified this. So I'm writing this in my book. Yeah. Okay. I hope in the future when people read my book, they will understand the relationship between. Qi Gong and the Yeng Gong, and then remove the term Yeng Qi Gong. Yeah, it's an important distinction to make because I, I'll, you know, by the time that Qi Gong make, come, came to the, the West, uh, it, it had kind of gone through a, a wide uh, permutation in China. Like you said, there was a lot of people innovating and, and doing different yes. things, and you know, so a, a lot of people here are not aware of the origins or, or the differences between Qi Gong and other practices. Because people didn't define the term that before they use it. Right, okay, yeah. they didn't define, but suddenly they put some meaning. Some term, but then into the, then for marketing purposes. Yeah. Look at the Shaolin monk. They, they use the break, the, the, his day, his day. That is Qigong. No Qigong. They, they do some movement. Yeah, that's for show. That's a circuit show. In Manchu, like we said, we have circuit soleil. This time to rush. Next time I bring you to see circuit soleil. Yeah, you so may some have idea, recognize some Qigong movement. Yeah, probably. By the way, Chinese uh, army soldiers, uh, military, uh, or even the police, they train them the, their soldiers with. Uh, before they train them with the qi gong, the young qi gong. Now they removed it from their curriculum now. Because it's harmful. Not it's harmful. harmful. It's a fake. Fake. Oh. Fake. Yeah. It's nothing to do with the qi gong. Yeah. Criminal we not a, are not afraid of this. They know they're fake. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so they remove this. Good news. That's a good thing. Yeah. Okay. If they see the soldier doing this, they give people illusion. Yeah. Give give people. I uh, look. If the, if they usually why they do this, must be reason. So people imitate. Yeah. Now when they re imi remove this. Excellent. Already, I'm making progress. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So what? So what about actual qigong? Like, is it qigong imp important for a Xingyi practitioner for like for maintain health, or does it not matter? Yeah, I need I need either side make your body strong. I need either um, help you to have a better circulation. You can do it. It's no problem. It's a good great idea. Uh, but I just want to say, how strong your fist is has nothing to do with your. Right. Circulation, breathing, circular energy, nothing to do with this. Qigong for, for, for 
health. Qigong for restore your health. Qigong for make your body stronger. Qigong for you have a better muscle, better strength, have a better sensitivity. Maybe you can sense something before it happens. Yeah. They can. Yeah. However, you want to punch stronger, faster, better, and by using Qigong, yeah. I don't think so. Yeah. But at least Xing Yi doesn't have this. But be careful, there's another term called Nei Gong. Right. What is Nei Gong? Anything make you strong is called Nei Gong. Nei Gong has nothing to do with Qi Gong. Qi Gong can be used as a kind of Nei Gong, but Qi Gong doesn't equal to Nei Gong. So Nei Gong could be anything. Anything. Like push weights. up. Yeah. Nei Gong. Yeah. Lift yeah. up. Nei Gong. Or oh, someone punch you, you can hold the strength. Nei Gong. Nei Gong. Okay. Nei Gong. Okay. You take a tonic, tonic herbs to improve your Nei Gong. Yeah. But the herb itself is not a Nei Gong. You only take this and make the, it work to your body. That can be you no know, a help for your navel. You have a, but nothing to do with the herb. So the same thing, just like the the punching this diet, the punch itself is not a navel, but the re effect result of the punching with the physical strength can be considered a solution to help you improve your navel. I see. So you know we we talked a little bit about Xu Dei in last time we talked. You know, speaking of other famous names in Hobei style, Xing Yi, and, and one of the things that you told me about was that uh, part of Xu Dian's uh, contributions to Xing Yi practice was he, he noticed that Xing Yi practitioners tended to become uh, stiff in, the, in this area here, like in the rib cage area and things like that. So he, he had more open, um, uh, more fluid movements. Are there, are there things that you see that are common injuries or physical shortcomings that people uh, that are Xing Yi practitioners suffer from? Things to look out for? Many. I think if don't, people don't practice correctly, there's many mistakes can happen and uh, potentially can injure, injure themselves. For example, if they stand on the ground of the death step, yeah. they get injured. Yeah. And if they punish something without the manage the speed and angle, if something very hard, then they injure the shoulder, the, the, the feet, and it can happen. But overall, Xing Yi is a very safe style in terms of its approach. In the older days, when we practice Xing Yi, we would say, you won't get injured if you practice the Xing Yi correctly. Why? Because we do not go to extreme. Li yeah. Sun Yi even said, in Xing Yi practice, even you do not need to stretch yourself too much. You don't need that kind of extreme flexibility, mm -hmm. like we saw, we see in the old Kung Fu movie mm -hmm. or Kung Fu training. You don't need Xing Yi. Li Sun Yi said that it's not because he want to promote Xing Yi for marketing purposes. That is what it is. Right. That's how we train Xing Yi. So when you, when you keep that like a natural structure, you won't get injured. Right. So it's the individual's uh, uh, responsibility to choose the right method to pre prevent injury. But you follow the right practice, it's no problem. However, what you were asking me is about the limitation of the style in terms of the benefit to train someone to be ready. Right? It's about this. Like Sweden said, found the stiff this area, so we need to move. That's uh, you, that to improve the efficiency or effective effectiveness of the training. It's, it doesn't mean you get the, you you it will create an injury because you, your rib cage is stiff. Yeah. Stiffness is the relative term to flexible or flexibility. So we need to have a better flexibility through martial training, not from stretching. So we say, well, if you do not do Xing Yi enough, then you are you very stiff. So you better you know focus on certain area in practice. So that the stiffness has nothing to do with the injury. So it's more of a limitation. Limitation. Yeah. Okay. Limitation. Limited. Like myself, I have been working very hard to improve my English. But the thing is, I'm living in Montreal, Quebec. The official language in this province, the beautiful, is the French. Right. It's very hard for me to improve my English and uh, in a daily basis. But I'm learning French at the same time. I try to improve my English by talking with those who speak better English. But still, I have my limitation. Like some, uh, sometimes people in the audience in the in, in my my channel, they would say, "Hey, you have a strong accent, and uh, you speak very fast. Sometimes you you very forceful. You shout out. And, no, I said, no, I'm not shouting out. It's how I speak. Yeah. Chinese people appreciate it kind of speaking. Right. But I have my accent. I try to 
learn different accent. But by the way, I know I have an ability now. I can I can distinguish, I can identify which which state the person comes from, United States. Yes, if I'm Boston, I can recognize accent. If I'm uh, New York, Brooklyn, I can recognize accent. Yeah. If I'm if I'm uh, you know uh, California, I can recognize their accent. Right. So so I I'm, what I'm saying is everyone have their limitation. Like like my accent the limitation. Jinxini is the stiffness of a uh, ribcage. Yeah. Same thing. Yeah. It's not a disease, not the problem, not the mistake. Just what it is. Right. By the way, give me 10 more years of time, I will improve my accent. But I got confused even though what kind of accent I should follow. Right? <laughs> it's very confusing. See, seriously. Yeah. Well, I quite ask myself very often, which kind of accent I should follow. Yeah, it's funny in the United yeah. States that they, they train people that are uh, telemarketers or, or, or newscasters to try to speak with an accent from the middle of the country, like the Plain States, because it's a very um, even sort of okay. almost, I don't want to say bland. But 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 just like Flat. kind of a flatter or Flat. generic accent. Yeah. I, I I because in in Chinese I can imitate different accent. Yeah. I can imitate. Yeah. Sometimes even even accent they, they people won't recognize me. I can call people with a local accent, then they, they won't recognize me because it's my training. Yeah. I like opera. I sing op basic right. opera, so I can imitate different sound, different quality of the sound. It's my training. But come to English, it's very hard. Yeah. Because it's very hard. Uh, I'm sure you'll be able to do it before too. I will try. I will try. Yeah, that'll be interesting to see. I'm, I'm, by the way, I'm learning French. Is in my neighbor? They decide they're from Paris. Right. Yeah. They speak Paris French. Yeah. My right side, the beautiful neighbor, they are from here. Yeah. Quebec from Quebec. Yeah. Quebecois yeah. French. They are the same, but accent different. Very different. Uh, yes. I guess I'm kind of confused. <laughs> yeah, kind of confused. Yeah. I talk to them, so I talk one with each one. Yeah. yeah. I will improve my accent. Yeah. Yes. So. We talked a little bit before about how with Lee Sun Yi and, and, and men of that generation, you know, they, they were very much looking at, at, at improving things, improving Xing Yi and trying to be on the cutting edge of things. What do you think the current state of Xing Yi is? Do you think it's, is it developing? Is it moving forward? Is it stagnant? I think so. Um, in China, I will be, I'm already being considered as the old generation. Mm -hmm. Already, because of my age, um, my experience, my my lineage is already considered as older generation. So when I see some uh, uh, younger generation, young of teachers, when they promote Xing Yi, many of them they try to analyze details, which is great. They analyze analyze details, but I think they overemphasize the characteristic of their style. They overemphasize on what they are doing. You know, the, instead of talking about what she, what the style is, what the Xing Yi is, they try to avoid the big picture in order to understand on themselves. Why? To avoid conflict. If you say you can't be like this, the other person say can't like this, right. they problem. Yeah. So they emphasize, but they don't emphasize why they go like this, why go like this. And they do not try to know why other people is use a different angle, for example. That is a potential issue yeah so so there's no way to unify to integrate this company together many years ago I tried this I called a lot of people I said look my I have a proposal let invite all the style the female teacher together we work together to create a standard yeah okay common standard we let's vote we create something everyone are free to speak out what they believe they even like to vote for some common principle right. angle of the foot the, the, which fingers trans that we do this i worked very hard for a few years and uh, many of them say yes let's do it but when time to work nobody showed up yeah. nobody because it's why this some first but something new yeah. second is, i think you need maybe in china need you no know, governmental those kind of uh, power you know to impose this to work on this and uh, and the third thing people may try to avoid potential conflict they didn't work out yeah, yeah that's, that's so that's years ago many years ago i did that i found out mm, that's the idea not the right so I, I i waste of my time i i did a few years with people and do you think that the people in the west might be more receptive to that idea that sort of idea the white but the quite the question is who will do it I yeah. right who will do it i i know some people in the west they they teach uh, martial art and uh, some people 
work very hard to promote their teaching program. Okay, they work so hard and to present themselves, they are the authentic one, they are the best one. And I don't know. I, I try to be more English. I, I try to be more English than English people. Mm. Why speak English? Because I want to improve my English. Right. Okay, but some people when they practice Chinese martial art, they teach Chinese martial art. They, I, I don't want you to pretend. Okay, they work at more than Chinese the way they behave. Yeah, yeah. They use the accent. They use the maybe same facial expression. I don't know. I, 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 but like I said, no matter how hard I improve my English, there's something missing. Yeah. So at same at the same token, I think they they will experience the same limitation. Yeah. Right. Then now the question: Who will make this call? Who will? I don't think it yeah. will happen. I don't think will happen. It will only happen is a conflict. So do you think that the lack of standardization in Xing Yi is going to hinder it from moving forward as a martial art? Okay. Or? Okay. My answer like this. That's a good question. Huh? If there is the art. We should allow or permit promote certain flexibility sure. or innovation, creativity. But if there is a technical system, we should have a fundamental, fund some fundamental topic elements should be unified, commonly agreed. Unfortunately, to that even many people cannot agree. Yeah. Uh, a couple of years ago, a few years ago, some people plotted an event to question my angle of my elbow yeah, of yeah. all those. Issue, yeah. Of course, uh, even today I forgave them. I understand them because why? It's a limitation. It's their limitation. They forget it's the artist artistic part. Sure. They mechanically translate the document, right? But writing Chinese. But they they try to be more Chinese than Chinese. Yeah. Okay. They uh, uh, my English is a, is a beginner level, but my Chinese is a really really advanced advanced level. Sure. But some people they 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 try to. Uh, promote themselves, uh, understand the Chinese more than like Chinaman like me. Right. I use the word Chinaman because I like the word China because right. China is the the the, the proselyte, okay? Right. And like me. Right. Good stuff. They criticized my movement, but they didn't use my standard five elements demonstration as example. They used my my single arm as I moved arm, right? Right. You see, yeah, if right. you put it here, you move like this. You cannot. You can, it compare. You cannot go like that because the body structure change. You move up in right. order to to compensate here. Right. But if you here, you go like this. You see the difference, right? Here or oh, here. Then they take this and say he's a five element like this. It's a, in, incorrect. Yeah. And even worse, it's a someone behind this. Yeah. Right. I, I don't want to mention the name because anyone make a mistake. That for sure. That is his limitation. Sure. But so it's very hard to unify this. It's very hard. Yeah. So. I think in the West, if someone to try this, please go so. Uh, I, I don't think it will happen. Yeah. And will problem will happen. Yeah. Could but why demonstrate a different way to do different thing? I got criticized. Right. Even though I'm a Chinaman. Yeah. I I practice Chinaman art. Right. Yeah. Think about this. Right. Right. Yeah. But since that person living in Beijing, and uh, he he become more Chinaman than me. Yeah. Right. But it's yeah happen. So you know, it's funny that you know you mentioned something about people like talking out uh, training manuals, like looking at training manuals and, and, and maybe taking them too literally. Yes. And I can't remember if we talked about this last time when we we spoke. Yes, we talked about this about how the, the training manual is yes. only specific, specific moment. Moments, specific right? moment. Yeah. So from then on, I realized I should start a new project. I should create create proverbs. So I right. appreciate my friend, right, who criticized this this issue, subconsciously, hiddenly, right, in the right, right. So I make my I contribute my own proverb. So I already I publish at least five hundred fifty six hundred already. Yeah, and you have you know, yeah. videos to go with most yes. of those, right? So yes, people realize that's good stuff. Show, show the show the issue. At yes. So well, I do not argue with people. I, sure. Well, there's no point, but. It's it's helpful because you know when we're even when you look at the training manuals you know some of them don't have illustrations and some of them do but it's, it can be kind of hard to see but when you see on video and, and, and it's a proverb and it specifically relates to a specific issue and yes it video, exactly it, it greatly it's no universal principle universal principle is you practice right 
you stop bothering other people, you practice. That is the universal principle. Right. Otherwise, specific problem for specific situations is the issue. Mm -hmm. right. They talk about like this. Uh, you, 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 you think you have to see like this? It's no way. You, you tie yourself, no way. Yeah. You, you become an old dinosaur, you know, like the old dinosaur. Yeah, like the, yeah. Like right, a, like the movie, right? Yeah. Right. It's, it's wrong. It's, it's, a, wrong. Um, it's wrong. Take, taking things too literally. Maybe. Yes, literally. But the people try to be, you know, show they are literate, right? right. They are not illiterate. So right. they, they yeah. literally interpret something, which is, uh, which is fun. I understand this, but li literature, right? To try to, I, I know some uh, word, I know some term, so I'm a literate. I'm not an illiterate. Right. So they, yeah. they understand the thing literally, right? Too literally, maybe. Yeah, yeah, yes. So interesting, huh? they, those discussions so inter so interesting. You see, this this tea, is it's a very a soft, tea. very yeah. soft. Yeah, it is. Why? Because sometimes those questions, those interview topic, can be too, right, too harsh. You troublesome. Need, you need the tea to, uh, so I change the tea. So before we start with the bill, I said, well, let me change the tea. You did we don't say that. Yeah. Yes. You said, you, you said something more harmonizing. Yeah, this tea. Yeah, it's good tea. Soft it's very and nice. Nice. Of, of a feeling. Very nice. Right. So, so given that there's not going to be, there's likely not going to be any like broad agreement on, on, on things of that nature in Xing'e, it's just the way that it's always been and probably always will be that way. What, what do you see for the future of the art? How do you think it's going to develop? Where is the future of the art? Do you think it's going to grow more in Europe? Europe has hardly any Xing'e. Uh, well, they have some, some, some. good Xing'e, Xing'e teachers, but not as many as in the West and not as many as China. Seriously, I don't think about this. What I do is I will promote this. I do my best. I write. I will write a book, make a video, make a lecture, then uh, teach some students, let my students to carry on. To that, that's what I, I'm doing. I do not predict thing. I really because it's beyond our our limitation. It's, it's yes, beyond our limitation. Some people when they pull out the thing, they predict they will win. Actually, no way to see. No, no, no. Don't I? Don't, I don't see that. Uh, I, I I do my best to to promote internal style. Uh, I still improve myself in terms of understanding, teaching, you know, the, to explain this. I still improve myself. I see my progress. I believe the cell will will making progress as well. Uh, we just keep going. That's the only way we can do. We only, we cannot manage the trend. We cannot manage other people. We cannot manage how uh, practitioner choose which cell they will focus on. But we can manage ourselves that we keep going. We show, uh, you know, we share with our knowledge, information with other people. Which time, uh, knowledge will get preserved, and then maybe get uh, uh, applied. Then eventually we survived. Then one day some people come out in the future. We don't know when we will really be able to promote this art. Let's hope. You know, I am very positive to the style, to the future style. And uh, sometimes one cell become popular, sometimes the other cell become less popular, but like a cycle. Yeah, okay. that's true. I think there's a value it be able to survive. Okay. I agree. I, I strongly believe in this. So earlier today, we were training and talking and drinking tea, and we got into a conversation about Magia. And, and you, you, oh. yes. you, you mentioned that he, even when he was much older, he, he almost looked like he was getting stronger like in, in his old age yes uh, what do you think how, how is that possible do you, what do you think some good um... okay Ma Jie is was a popular teacher in Tianjin in a certain way okay not that popular um, especially when he getting old getting older he 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 get he became popular I can say this uh, we are the same generation in martial art practice uh, I met him many times when I was a child he visited my grandfather and he called my grandfather Gong Fu Uncle. And uh, I call him uh, Uncle because he's very old compared to me. He's uh, at least he's uh, 40 years more older than me. So I called him. He said, No, no, don't call me Uncle, okay? You call me Gong Fu Brother. I'm your brother in front of your, your grandfather because you learn from your grandfather, you know, we are brothers. I like him. I liked him so much. And uh, later, I visited him many times because he visited my grandfather. I visited him. He he was the the one who returned the Wudang sword 132 form to Wudang Mountain, because after uh, 1980s the Wudang sword practice in Wudang Mountain disappeared. There's nobody practice 132 Wudang sword. They maybe practice 10 
20, 30 of the borrow other routine, they demonstrate like Wu Dang Shar, they not Wu Dang Shar. So he was about to return to them. So he studied from the Meng Xiaofeng. Meng Xiaofeng studied from the Li Jinglin. Li Jinglin studied from the Song Wei Yi. This is a direct lineage. We call the Dan Pai Wu Dang Elixir Sword. And uh, I, I never studied this, okay, with him because my grandfather said, don't learn this, okay? Don't learn them stuff. You learn our own stuff. Don't learn from me. But I think we know each other so well. And uh, so I, I know this, this uh, style. I know this practice, but I, I cannot move. I only can see this. Right. So when someone practice the sword, I know, oh, it's a Wudang sword or not. But like later on, like Yang Sheng Fu, those people, and uh, uh, Huang Yuan Xiu, those people learn the Wudang sword from, uh, from Li Jinglin, General Li Jinglin. Right. right? So that later, Yang style sword actually from Wudang sword later on. Mm. But in Tianjin, because Li Jinglin in, in invited uh, Sun Wei to teach in Tianjin, the Wudang, Wudang sword, the only lineage holder at that time. And then, and then the, 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 the Ma Jie's teacher learned from Li Jinglin, so Ma Jie became the top master to carry that lineage. And then in the 1890s, he went to Wudang Mountain to return the practice to them. But why, why, why I met him? I was a kid, right? right. He was uh, you know, middle age. Right. But later, when last time before he passed away, I visited him. He was in his 80s. Then I saw his photo before he passed away of the 90s something. Yeah. He was still very strong. When he was 80, even 90s, he looked like 60s. He yes. has all the muscle. I know, well, how come this man now became stronger compared to decades ago? Yeah. When I met him when he was a middle age, he's not the strong, he's not muscles. Kind of, normal. you know, normal. Yeah. Later, I'm not saying become abnormal, become stronger. Yeah. Big muscle, the hair, the face, you no know, snit posture. 80s, 90. Yeah. Then my friend visited him before he, he passed by like a couple of months. I show, he showed me his photo, very strong. Mm. But he died of an accident, not the, not the natural death, right. you know, something happened in his, his home, then he passed away. The, 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 the beauty of the story is that he never stopped practicing mm. before that accident happened. Yeah. He even could improve himself, not only the, the, the practice, understanding the teaching, but also even physical appearance. He improved himself. It's very, very impressive, and uh, and uh, he 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 practiced the you know sword and the, the, the dagger, flying dagger. Yeah. I saw him when he was uh, in the park at that time. When I was a teenager, he practiced throw on the tree. Then visit him at his home. He 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 he, he threw this on the wood board, then covered by uh, the, the the cardboard yeah. in order to. And I said, hey, you still practice? I know you're still doing this because that's part of the Wudang practice. By the way, I'm sure from now on, Wudang people will teach this in Wudang Mountain. You see, after, after the years, uh, some people will teach in Wudang Mountain flying tiger. Yeah, <laughs> after this interview, you will see. But they are very fast. Wudang people are very fast to learn things. Now they're learning Ba Ji, they learn the Xing Yi, they learn the Tai Chi, uh, they, they learn the, 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 the Ba Gua. Yeah. No, they are doing many things now. Yeah. I'm, I'm sure later, Wudang flying dagger because it's part of the Wudang curriculum. Yeah, yeah. There's a nice style, nice schools based on Sun Wei Yi's uh, teaching back to uh, 1920s when he was in, uh, uh, invented to uh, 1910 something in Tianjin. He wrote the document. Ma Ji had this uh, menu. Yes, yeah, so I, I had read that in a book um, and I, I didn't know if it's true or not until I spoke to you about it earlier today about the daggers because I'd, I, I'd not that's real. That before. Yeah, that's real. That's stuff. pretty amazing. So, you know, with Ma Jie as an example, I, I think, you know, a while back, um, Robert James, you know, interviewed Jack Schaefer for Dali, and, and one of the things that Jack was talking about was how his Bagua teacher stayed very strong oh. all the way until he, okay. until, he, until he died. And he said that's one of the things that's great about martial arts is that it allows you to live very, um, in a vital manner until, yes. until you die. You know, My grandfather. Like, Passed away, he was 98. Yeah. He was very strong, very right. healthy. Yeah. Of course, he needed, he needed medical care at a certain age, right? Sure. You have a cough, pneumonia, cold, yeah. as any senior people. Right. But overall, you know, he, could maintain, he could maintain his uh, physical strength, yeah. you know, very sharp, and he taught me many things. You know, he could you know, uh, manage to happy me. It's, you know, it was great at this time. Yeah. And it's good. I, th I think that's one of the main benefits of martial art practice. I think that goes back to what we were talking about with training the yi and training the shen. Is that it really gives you a um, kind of a lust for life? It makes you want to live. You know, it gives you vitality. It makes you enjoy your life. I think so. 
uh, which will redefine the term immortality. Many people believe immortality is that people never die. Unfortunately, everyone have to die. Even though you believe Zhangshan Feng, right, e evaporated <laughs> like a like a steam. Yeah. That's that's a legendary story. Everyone physically have, to, however, knowledge, experience, spirit, or influence can last for a while. That called immortality. Yeah. Immortality is not it's about the spirit. It never talk about physical body. Of course, in the history, few people are were considered that the physical body become. Uh, energy become rainbow right mm. that's the uh, that's the story but in reality i don't think so so why is, why when people ask me questions so i always ask them so what is the definition of the term you are using for example immortality what is immortal right and what is everlasting you know what is the sage we have to define it first before using it always just use this and casually without a clear definition that's fine also Right, because we can conceive perceive that as a cultural phenomenon. Oh, you really believe in that? You have to define this, define the the term first. Like for example, Taoism. What is Taoism? Oh, Tao. What is Tao? And how to understand the Tao? Some people claim if you do not believe in Taoism religion, how can you practice Tao? Wait a minute. What do you mean the practice of a Tao? How to practice Tao? Tao exists there. If Tao is something there exists, do you need do you need you to practice the Tao? We should apply the Tao, study to act, behave according to the Tao. Now do you practice the Tao? Tao already exists there. So it's you practice religious Taoism or not has nothing to do with the Tao itself. So you see, people just randomly say something without have a clear definition. I think this is illogical. Illogical, but by the way, if this come from the belief system, then that we should not, you know, judge that, right? If right. my claim based on my belief system, that's fine. But I'm entitled to express my feeling toward certain uh, say, claim. I see that as a claim, right? The claim can based on different system, but I only see it as a claim. So I'm entitled to share my uh, understanding or feeling or experience. To that claim yeah that's that's the nature of beliefs right there's things that we believe yeah you believe, believe i believe nature, also right yeah right yeah everyone i believe around. in science <laughs> I, I believe in social study right i yeah. believe in psychological study yeah i believe our practice right yeah, yeah. results-based evidence yeah by the way science is approach yeah science is science itself is approach right yeah. we cannot deny things because scientifically speaking has not been have the answer yet right it's a limitation of the science right it's approach the method that's true. it's a methodology that's true so someone is a science i'm a scientific i'm i'm a phd i'm a son i'm a scientific someone say this well you can be scientific but you are not representing of the science right you are individual right. you can say this you can only represent your understanding of a science but you are not embodied as a science itself yeah yeah a common misconception here. yeah yes Yes. Like same same that educated or smart people, you know, can make a simple, common, right, ridiculous, ridiculous mistake because they had been put into a specific area, just like a martial proverb, okay? Yeah. They make that claim based on specific occasion. Understandable. Understandable. My, my father had a saying, he said that an expert always lives uh, 20 miles away from home. And what he meant about that was is that somebody's an expert in something is they're, they're they're sort of confined to their own their own field they, they don't quite understand um, how their specific field maybe relates to yes it. but issue is that people do not see the limitation right they've only micro yeah. like oriented and focused yeah. instead yeah. of see the bigger picture first very dogmatic yeah, yeah yes that can be an issue of the of a modern system yeah right? yeah modern system. it's a limitation another yes. limitation all the time the two macro too, like overall yeah now we are too much we should true. put them together good, good yes. observation like for example Taoism when there's a Tao right, they use the Tao to explain everything right mm -hmm. it cannot because the principle is a concept they cannot right. explain specific something you can use a plan overall but not specific right. so so that's how I see this okay and when we analyze certain practice we should use specific knowledge to work on this instead of use very vague very general top topic like relax relax you relax of course you always can say you relax because relaxation has no limits <laughs> right even though you you dissolve you 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 melt like a water 
and also still not enough, not pure enough. But the water is heavier than the steam, mm -hmm. so you need to relax the water become steam. The steam not still enough to to concentrate. You should let it spread first. Yeah. So relaxation is the approach. It's not ultimate goal. However, we can evaluate your state of relaxation specific at this moment for this for this movement for this routine for this practice for application you can use analyze this but you, overall you cannot you cannot criticize someone so this is the trick for a teacher one other teacher the student other teacher what i should improve the teacher says, oh relax or oh, relax and all we can say this that means no answer actually right yeah Irrespons irresponsible answer mm. that's very bad actually mm. no, i don't do that by the way, I, I, I'm happy, I'm proud of myself that I don't do this. If I don't know, I say I don't know. Right, okay. yeah. That's important to be able to do that. Important. Authenticity is important. Yeah. It, that's one of the, I think one of the um, things about Western culture that I really appreciate is this teaching methodology. Um, I, I think there's, there's something to be said from it. It's great. Yeah. It's great. I improved myself in terms of teaching after I moved to Canada. Yeah. I thought I was good in teaching. I, I started to teach when I was 18 years old. Then I realized I was, getting old. I was not good. I was so many mistakes, so many problems. I, I improved myself to learn how to, with a student-centered teaching. You like the student to be the center of the te training. It's not you to express yourself. It's not how to make sure they understand your practice. That is important. It's not I show this. He cannot get this. That's his problem. That's the wrong attitude. Yeah. Our attitude should be, I, I tried my best. Let students understand me, and then he be able to master the practice. By the way, if the person doesn't want to uh, improve, doesn't want to change, doesn't want to improve himself, that's beyond the teacher's control. There's nothing they can do. There's a two-way communication. There's yeah. a both way. Yeah. I think that's a common problem in, uh, in in martial arts teachers is that they um, they want the, the the teaching to be too much about them and not enough about the practice. I think I see that a lot. Yes, I, lot. I, I I use the word intellectual laziness. <laughs> Intellectually, they understand it, but physically lazy. They don't want to do it. Intellectually laziness. Yeah. They think being able to equals to understanding. You understand that you can you can do it. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah. Some people are very good at doing something, but very bad at teaching it. Yes, and, and yes. others vice versa. So, yes, yeah. right. You you talked about magia earlier today, and we talked about some other. Um, you know, Tianjin has a reputation for being um, sort of a fertile ground for martial arts, especially in the past. You've talked to me about a lot of Xingyi teachers, some of whom are pretty famous that I'd heard of before and some of them I've never heard of before. Um, I, I don't know if we're really too early to talk about this or not, but since you I mentioned time. it I need earlier, no problem. You, you are working on a book, and it's yes. a rather large book. Okay. Um, are there, there are going to be a lot of uh, martial arts teachers and their history that you're going to introduce to people uh, yes. in this book? Yes. Uh, I started to work on this. Uh, I had the idea a long time ago, but uh, due to different obligations and uh, my family, my professional uh, obligation, so I, I, I had to postpone this. And uh, then I found this year, I, I, start, I, say, I started to write this book. And uh, I, I write one unit per day. So from uh, uh, beginning of June, I started to write two units per day. Each unit, each unit is about like, and uh, one Google Drive size is a page, and I said ten sides of the font. So I have one one page. My objective is to write record out whom I knew, and in in, in my limited time, and what I learned from them. And learn from them. That means they are my teacher. Right. I know them. Some people are younger than me. Some older than me. Or my family, my teachers. I read. I will write down my learning experience with them. So I use this kind of uh, it's uh, it's uh, this style to re record what I learned from them. And uh, during this time, I will mention a lot of names, maybe fifty of name or even more or less. And uh, I my plan is I will write down my teaching experience in North America. You know. So uh, how I have my students, what I learned from uh, through teaching. So this book should be done, you know, next year. I'm working very hard. I didn't miss a day when I started this. So I hope next year. Uh, I have an issue this I want to think to be perfect, but there's no perfection in the world. So I, we, we go toward the perfection. We go toward there. So in this book, I will re write down uh, many, many names. 
not only in Tianjin, because I travel many right. areas in China to visit people, to pray to visit people. I give them credit by mentioning their name, but I will write down clearly what I learned from them, even though they are not my teachers. Yeah. And uh, I will I will make this book as a as a right as a record of the technique, history, culture, and uh, personal experience. Yeah. Um, I'm writing this in Chinese. Same time, I will translate into English. Yeah. And uh, but I need to fix the Chinese part, then translate into English. And won't be that hard for me to do the translation. It will be a learning process for me to learn English. Yeah. Uh, that's my my my. I'm work, what I'm working on. I think we do we do need in our community. We do need another book about the the movement the details. Right. Already a lot tons of information, but people may looking for those kind of culture, political history, and those kind of personal individual, uh, those kind of experience. Right. So I'm working on this. It will be the first book in in the Chinese martial art history to use this way in writing to record the training. Yeah. And I I, I hope we will uh, have some. Uh, uh, audience, I'm a reader for this. Yeah, no, I'm sure there will be. You were kind I, enough I to show this. me some of it yesterday, and I, it was very exciting to be able to see I, it. I, I will make this a big yeah, book. <laughs> it's going to be a very big book. Big yeah. book. It's a contribution. It's a contribution. Yeah. yeah. And I, make this very, very affordable, then let the people to keep this you know, in the future. Yeah. And that'd be nice. I, I think it's going to be a great contribution. I think people are going to be really excited about it because it's not. Like you said, it's not just technical things. It's a lot of history and culture and uh, literature in there, and, and things that a lot of people in the West don't know anything about. It's going to yes. be the first time a lot of people have learned about some of these teachers. Yeah, I have to be very careful to write those uh, information. Why? Because I'm a, I'm walking on a very fine line, right? Because I want this book to be published in different uh, countries, right. in different language. Mainly speaking, it's my own language, right? right. So I have to be very careful in writing this. Yeah. I may have to, you know, use different uh, words between, right, uh, the my own language and the English language. Right, right. I'm, I'm, a, I will overcome the challenge caused by historical, political, he, and uh, uh, issues. Yeah. I will try to find a solution. So far, no solution yet, but I will find a solution. If there's a will, there's a way. Yeah, okay. I'm confident. Yeah. So, so that, that, I, I will, I will keep working on this. I hope in end of the year, I would have uh, enough raw material, and then I will edit this. I will edit this. Yeah. I will let my sons or my students to edit some uh, some part of this. I hope you will happy me. Oh, absolutely. To, to, to edit as well. Honored. To I will help. appreciate yeah, the, very that your effort. Thank you. I want to, I want to help for no other reason to hurry up and get it finished. So I can yes. <laughs> Let's do that later. I. I, every day I'm working. I, I, my plan is uh, in the end of this year I would have uh, all the raw material, technical yeah. part. Yeah. Then we put them together and uh, put the uh, the his history, culture, those elements into part of this to 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 draw to paint a greater picture yeah. that the people know what happened back then. Yeah. I believe I'm the generation that we can write. We can talk. Yeah. We speak a different language. We have a different mentality in dealing with a different culture. We experienced the change, dramatic change, of of, of the art, and we learned the old way of practice. We learned the new way of teaching, yeah. and we live in the West. We enjoy the freedom of speech. We enjoy the free communication, and at the same time, we want to record what we experienced before in a right method, and. So I think it's my responsibility and my duty to work on this. Yeah. I can sacrifice all other work in order to make this uh, uh, this uh, work uh, available. This is what I'm doing. I think it's going to be a great bridge between past practice and present practice and everything in between. I, I think it will be a, a great contribution. So what I think is, I just put things there. Then in the future, let later generation to use this to charge this. Okay, we do not expect anything. Read of in terms of return at this moment, right. leave for the leave like the history to judge this. This is how I work on this. Yeah. Look, I'm I'm not looking for any return of this book. What look what the effort I made to 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 write those history. They involve a lot of uh, recall, memory, emotion, right, and the sensation when you write those things. Sometimes yeah. we don't want to think about it, right? Name, but we have to, right. And some have to call some people to verify some historical data, 
right? When your grandfather possible, I have to call some people, you know, I, I don't know their grandfather issue. I learned from him. How do I remember? I no way to remember. I have called their family members. It takes a lot of effort, but it will be, you know, a good contribution to the community for the future generation. It's not for now. I don't, I'm not thinking for, 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 for any return for this moment, no. This, this is the motivation for me to do things. Like well, so, so far, I have been working on my like my channel, the YouTube channel, for how long now? Three years? More than three years. More than three years. More than three years, right? And I have been working very hard to 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 organize those topic under help of a lot of community members, especially some of my students, like Lokesh, your yeah. friend. Yeah. Right. We Lokesh. work together. A lot of our, work. Our this guy, you know, he's so detail oriented. Yeah. Sometimes drive me crazy. Yeah. Sometimes I hate him, and this guy. Right. Yeah. Too much. But after that, oh, so good. Look, right. Yeah, he does Look, he improved that work. I said, you have understand this. I look, I'm looking for clarity. I'm looking for the precision. But if something beyond, beyond your understanding, like the um, some Taoism stuff, uh, that culture uh, issue, right? we can, you know, take easy for that. For other technical part, I know you have to understand this. Yeah. So uh, during this process, oh, I learned so many things from him, yeah. you know. Yeah. You, you know him very well. Oh yeah, right? we couldn't do any of this without Lokesh. Right? Yes, He's yes, a major player. Yes, and other people have a lot of community member, and they they ask me questions, send me email. Sometimes the email, uh, the question can be you know very sensitive <laughs> to making me to think, mm, how should I handle this? How should I you know to work on this correctly without insulting people? Because you never know when you right. say something insult someone, right? Yeah. And uh, so I said, well, I do my best uh, to. Not to not right, to avoid uh, have any negative information. So I'm doing. I, I try to promote this kind of overall uh, message right, yeah. carried by those video, and uh, I'm not looking for any return of those uh, material. Yeah. Of course, I manage the 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 level of the information because I cannot go to very deep. Already deep enough, I believe. So, so very deep. Right? Very deep. But I cannot go to too much. Otherwise, it's no end. People get lost. They, yeah. they blame on me. Right? It's not good. <laughs> We can create a little bit of confusion because nature of learning, nature of teaching. Yeah. But if question. too much, that's not good. Right. So we have to have to manage this. Good, good news. Good thing is that after years of the working, and if someone follow my channel for a while, there's no more confusion. Right. They understand how the system work and what the structure of the knowledge. Right. They they already. I can see the progress. I received some email. People say, "Well, in the beginning, I didn't understand this. I misunderstood this. Now I read it. I follow your channel. It's a great information. I really it really benefited my practice, yeah. and I really I feel very happy when reading those information." Yeah, it, it makes a big difference. It's a lot of information that I think somebody would be hard pressed to to even consume it all. And like I told you yesterday, you know, I started watching your YouTube channel many years ago yeah. and, and and here i am now so <laughs> yes it, it's your it second it, time come back to Montreal. Yeah, second time this year <laughs> well your practice is very good yeah really good foundation please uh, like I, I i like told you yesterday your practice is good and uh, you, you just add some new elements add a new flavor then to enrich your practice that's what what uh what i can um like offer to you yeah. I'm not trying to correct you because correction means mistake. It's nothing correct. We just improve this yeah. to add some element to broaden your 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 view of the richness of the style. Yeah, that's the uh, that's the, the the element. So when we practice together, I didn't mention any theory. No, because you you already know this. I no need for this. But I can put the 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 different style like Xue Dian, Zhang Zhaodong, Li Sun Yi, and the different Hebei style into your practice to make it better. Yeah. And uh, to, to make the movement more suitable, more tailored to your body structure and your previous training background. Yeah. That's what I'm doing. Okay, so I, I, didn't, I didn't use the word correction at all. Why? Correction means mistake. No, no mistake. Yeah. N nothing to correct. I'm always happy to learn new things. Yeah, it's that's, a, that's great. A that's great. Yeah. I'm fortunate to be able and to. And I learned also, you know, when you see your movement, because you try to st stay neutral uh, mm -hmm. position. You didn't go further. I know mm, why he put the neutral. I told him go further. Oh, because he want to he want to keep, keep the structure instead of like this. He want to keep structure. I told you go further. Then you move back, yeah. right? So I and I learned this because people want to stay neutral.
but in training you have to go a little bit further, even <laughs> forward or, or backward, instead of only stay here. Yes. The, we are very lucky that today there's only two times of noise come from my my uh, some some activity you know performed in surrounding. I'm not saying it's my neighbor, okay? Surrounding, okay? So that's good. We are lucky. So I hope the quality of the audio will be good. We we used the quiet part of the day for practice, <laughs> and then decided to start talking when it, when it got noisy. Yeah, the overall, I enjoy this place very much. In the uh, summertime, I stay here very, very, very often. Uh, I try to manage this style of my yard. Uh, some, some, even some YouTube audience say, "Oh, you have to immediately to clean your yard." But <laughs> I, I like this uh, style. You have some bamboo, some tree, you know. I like this fashion. Uh, it's hard to convince the city officials because the city sometimes come to come to here. They, they 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 try to convince me have to do certain way. I told them, look, right, you have by law right now. The by law cannot uh, manage the the my can to, cannot let me to do certain way in my yard, and uh, so you have to be legal. Uh, I deal with them. Right. So. Uh, so so I, I really enjoy this. In the beginning, I thought we should do the inside. Then I know why not outside. Oh, that's great. Yeah. So I hope the quality will be good. I think it should be okay. Should be okay. Be fine. You know, uh, we were talking about um, practice and the importance of practice. How important is it to have a uh, practice partners in Xing Yi? In so, any martial art, we need to have a partner in order to sense other people's strengths in order to experience how to use it, in order to practice the application, in order, to, in order to understand the style better. That's the essential. However, to some style may not that uh, the, the priority to some style is not that the key. And uh, we don't have to mention this. Uh, I think maybe yoga, they do have to personal practice. Maybe some yoga. I, I don't, I'm not sure based on my observation, it's a more individual. Um, Xing Yi, very important. Mm. So Li Luoneng, the founder of Xing Yi, revolutionized the, the two the adding two person form into the training system. Before Li Luoneng, this uh, this kind of approach was not uh, popular. In Xing Yi, he created this. So with his students in Shanxi, like the with the Chou Yijai, he created some uh, two person form. Quick, oh, make sure the practitioner will be quickly to master the reflex right use the face routine to create this kind of reflex that's the really really good tai chi had the push hand right but why why xing yi right why xing yi right didn't have a you know the two the form so the founder of xing yi created this then before him did xing yi has have the same approach based on my knowledge no at least it's no fixed curriculum in the style of course, they have application. But now, time I came with application, we talk about the two person form. So that is the starting point of uh, the, the how to sense it with the partner. So, do things like on Shen Pao, for instance, is that was that something that was formulated at that time period, or did that come later? And uh, many people say he he created. I think much later, yeah. much later. So in the beginning, it was more just like soft five soft elements. Text. Okay. And the uh, and the Wu Hua Pao. There's a lot of two okay. person form. Two person form, but later, long form, much later. But no matter the, the, which one created the first, which name, but the idea, the practice, the approach is there, was there. So that's the first one. He was the first one who did that. Other styles, Shaolin have the two person form as well. Sure. I'm going to talk about the yeah. three internal styles. Tai Chi has push hand, uh, but they do not have a two person application, application uh, a two person like, with the form. They, they really focus on the style. Uh, the, 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 the Tai Chi energy movement to put up, up, up uh, at the push hand format, not based on the speed, the strength used at the Xing Yi to put them for. The different, different, different approach. No reflexive training. Not the same thing. Not the same thing. Not the same thing. So, you know, a lot of people, obviously, Zoom classes and online classes have been a thing for a while now, and they became even more popular during the pandemic because people were, a lot of people were trapped indoors, couldn't, couldn't attend classes if they had a, re a regular martial arts class. 
Um, for people who live maybe like in a remote area or they're not able to attend regular classes, do you think that Xingyi is something that they, they can learn on I think online? so. I uh, think at so. At least in the beginning? I think so. Because Xingyi, the, the beauty for part of the beauty of Xingyi is the linear movement. You move linear. You can, if you the camera in front of the, the audience or the, the teacher on the one side later, no problem. You only can see three things. One, two. Three enough. You don't need from the bike. Right. right. From here, if you're top, you don't need. Right. You just from the three angle be enough. Right. It's much easier than bagua. Yeah. It's easier than tai chi. Yeah. We yeah. take a lot of small movement. Right. Yeah. It's Very really challenge. Yeah. Right. Xingyi much easier. Yeah. But you, you can verbally to tell people. Okay. Extend further. Turn more. Turn less. You can verbally instruct that person how to move. Tai Chi even hard, very hard. Much harder. Yeah. Very hard. Yeah. Make circle smaller, right? how to be. How? It's harder to teach. Yeah. Bagua is even harder. Yeah. But when you turn, you see different part. Yeah. Right. right. The angle has to be high from the camera here. Then you move to here, and camera here cannot see this angle. Right. It's much, it should be much easier. Much easier. So obviously, you know, you have the book going on right now, which is going to take up a lot of your time, but have you given any thought to. to uh, like a wide, more widespread online teaching program in the I, future. I think I will. I, I I will work on this later on because I, I still teach. I I'm still teaching people. Right. People come to here. I teach them online. I take a private class. I have a lot of people how to improve their practice. I'm still doing this, but uh, to be able to accept new students, yeah. uh, this is a very really diff, diff, different story. Yeah. Because I have to be responsible to the quality of the teaching. Right. I can make online teaching right away. I can do it tomorrow. But I, I learned technology. I know how to use a camera. I know how to use the internet, right? I have a different, you know, background in terms of using technology in teaching. Yeah. I can do it next week. Yeah. But the reason is I, I'm not doing this, not being, I'm lazy, because I want to make sure I'm ready. I will be able to help people. I will, I will fully, you know, I will fully engage in, in my teaching yeah. for quality control purposes. Yeah. It's, it's not for control, but for quality control. Right. right. I control myself in order to improve the quality control. Yeah. Some people, they actively promote themselves. In, they, I think they, 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 we have a different, uh, different uh, you know, uh, life condition. Our, our situation is different. Yeah. I, have other, uh, I have other professional application. I have other things to do. Sure. So I still work on that. I put it as actual. Yeah. Right. But if I, if I have to really work on this, fully engage this, I have to make sure I'm ready. Yeah. But then, no, I'm not ready. I don't want to, you know, start something, then my, leave my students uh, aside, yeah. then just, uh, you know, throw something, uh, ir ir what's the, irresponsibly, right? That's yeah. not right. Yeah, you want them to have the same quality of instruction as exactly. your person. Exactly, students. exactly. Yeah. I'm, I'm so careful about this. Yeah. I, like I said, I can start it tomorrow. But I'm not doing this. I have to control myself not doing this. Yeah. Right? Think about this. Yeah. I can start three years, many years ago. Yeah. I put a camera there, you know, I have one student, I teach them, right? You pay membership fee. Yeah. Nothing wrong with me. Right. right. I know how to teach, how to talk. I, I have what an elbow issue, you know. I, no I tell you mistake, elbow. I know I can do that. I don't I don't do it because I control myself. Let other people to teach. Let them do it. No, no. Yes, I, I, I think one day I will do it, sooner or later, right? It's an issue of time, and you know, I can make my time, make it right, but I focus on my, my important thing, yeah. make the book, real, that real, I believe that's a real contribution. Lasting contribution. Yeah, real yeah. contribution, instead of uh, only temporary, you know, right. sometimes for, for financial gain, for this stuff, you know, yeah. right? I, I appreciate the, 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 the Canada, you know, this, uh, this uh, relaxed uh, living, and environment, living condition, you work, you know, yeah. hard, and then you can, you know, manage your life, you know, have your free time, you can take care of the family, uh, meet a friend, to, to have some people, and start some other different projects, right, to contribute more to the society, and to maintain harmony with the uh, surrounding neighbors, uh, even though we have a different cultural background, different uh, linguistic, you know, uh, we say the, the way to communicate different, so it's a, uh, rich part of this country yeah and i like canada a lot one day i hope you move to here <laughs> become neighbor it may happen it may run the place near my home i like i like quebec a lot quebec is a it's a it's a unique place in this country 
Yeah. We have a different language, different culture, different tradition. Yeah. Even our cuisine is different yeah. here. And the people are very warm yeah. and have each other. Very nice. An easy going place. And uh, such a, and the cost of living is not that high, no. even though we are experiencing higher inflation compared to historical data, but still manageable, right? Yeah. And, and we, we have a lot of social programs, especially yeah. uh, are friendly to like me immigrants. Right. 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 Yeah. Right. Really, really nice place. We're doing this interview for the, not for your channel, but for the Dowie channel. And, and, and Dow Starts Organization International is something that you came up with that was, that was your idea for the organization. And your idea was is that you wanted there to be a, um, a, a instrument for means of other martial arts teachers and practitioners to sort of come together and share information, and uh, share quality information, uh, things of that nature. Um, how, how do you feel like that's going so far, and, and what, what are your hopes for that in the future? I think so far, uh, Dao Yi is going very well. First of all, we, we have interviewed a lot of people. Yeah. Also, many, most, almost all of them are very, very open, right, yeah. to accept our invitation and then to make time to share their knowledge. Also, some people even have a second time, right, yeah. for interview. Second and third time. And then we create a round table, you know, structure. And they are, many of them are really enjoying this. Yeah. Uh, we have no um, conflict among each other. We respect each other. Also, more interestingly, the community member or community audience, they really support this. Yeah. And no one put a, like a, attacking very nasty. No, uh, yeah. the people behave, act very civil yeah. uh, in a cultivated way, and which is very surprising because sometimes people you know, can, can act, behave differently. Yeah. Right? Now, so far, so good. Uh, I think maybe we can broaden, uh, gradually broaden uh, the, 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 the interview UE yeah. from more, uh, maybe some people from China, yeah. and the issue is the, the language right. and the time differences. Right. But many, the, the, the program or the, the, pers, the interview, the conversation program are not uh, available in China. Yeah. Right? So we right. have to overcome some technical issue. Also, uh, we need someone to translate the, those, those, those the conversation, right? The, in, so worst case scenario, if we, we do not find a lot of uh, world volunteer to do the translation, may I, I do it? I interview them. But I'm trying to make the time a little bit longer because when I have a translation during the interview, it takes a much longer time. Yeah. You translate the Chinese to English, English to Chinese, uh, almost you need to spend 40% or 30% of uh, energy yeah. for this. Yeah. So it, we may work on this. Um, already I contact a lot of uh, practitioners, the teachers in China, all of them are very happy to work with us. Yeah, that's uh, we just gradually make this happen. And then we'll, we'll be, we'll, we'll be very, a very interesting experience with time. Yeah. Uh, so far, uh, really good. We may organize some activity in the future, so organize some seminar um, for those the teachers by the Dao Yi. Uh, let's, uh, let's I really enjoy this kind of generic, this kind of development. Take your time, develop this, no pressure. But we constantly, on time, deliver and upload our uh, different interview, a uh, different episode. Yeah. So, so far, so good. Yeah, it's uh, a lot of work, but I think we're all enjoying it. We are working hard to contribute our knowledge, our effort to the community. Yeah. Yeah, without expecting anything return from the community. But so, their support is the return. Right. Their support is our expectation. Yeah. So far, well, we really, really have received a lot of support. Great support. It's a great, it's and, a great. And, and I think it's, you know, I just take this opportunity to remind everybody that we, we are actually a non-profit organization. So it's not, it's not just a, not just a YouTube channel. Yes, it's yes. actually an yes. organization that was formed with the uh, intent in mind of really developing and strengthening the martial arts yes. community. So. Also, know. I am I'm, I'm not the one who are actively actively involved in this process. I just you know uh, uh, present myself in the meeting and uh, sometime share some uh, experience, share some information, and uh, that's it. And uh, for I did video for the interview and to contact people uh, to 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 press, to, press, to handle all the technical issue. Then it's all my team, our team members. Uh, it's nothing to me because I, I really do not have this expertise to go very deep for those uh, those those uh, 
uh, operational issue. So I only, you know, uh, to, to the maximum to call each other, hey, do we have a meeting? What do we do? That's only what I'm doing. The effort is uh, contributed by the team member. Well, and we have a few team members. We all greatly appreciate all of your advice oh. and, and, the, and the, the fact that you, you know, had the, the idea and the um, uh, intent to, to, to support the community to, to form the organization in the first place. And we also really appreciate it when you let us interview you. Oh, thank you. I, I know that you know you never wanted to be interviewed, and we had to we had to bug you for a long time, because, a couple years. <laughs> because I I, yeah. I don't want the people perceive that it's uh, for my self promotion, yeah. Yeah. right? Well, I, I can assure everybody that it's not. Right. <laughs> <'Cause> <laughs> it, we we had to convince you to do an interview, but it's always great to be and, able to talk. And to you. Also, I strongly believe collaboration. Yeah, it's community yeah. effort. You can only get stronger. I believe that no matter what we do, for short run, temporarily we may get misunderstood. By some people, right? Different background, different voice, different attitude, different way, right? But for long run, people will understand. We are doing something, you know, good for the community, to the to the art. Uh, that's only our what, what the reason, only motivation behind our you no know, effort. So thank you for spending time to visit Montreal. Thank you for having this interview again. I hope. Uh, our conversation, you know, will bring some benefit uh, to our audience, yeah, uh, not know. not only to my channel but also to the Daoyi channel. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you.